Okay, honey. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I wanted to give you a garden update. We're about to get a thunderstorm come through. So we have a break and I wanted to catch you up on some of the things about the garden. Yes, you know, he's going to bark. Welcome to the farm. We have cows that moo, dogs that bark, turkeys that go and it's loud. You'll be all right. Nosy Rosie, y'all see Daffodil up there? She follows me everywhere. She is doing so, so good. So I just wanted to give you an update on the garden real quick, give you a few tips uh, and show some of the things that I've been working on. This has really, really, really been a labor, labor of love because over the last six weeks up until yesterday, or was it yesterday? Yes, up until yesterday, we had only had two rain showers. So I've really had to take care of the garden as much as possible as far as water. Um, I am trying to keep the weeds down as much as possible. Somebody asked me, they were like, how do you keep the weeds out of your garden? I said, do you have two fingers? <laughs> All right, so you can see right here, the sunflowers that came up from last year and the year before, these are all volunteers, um, are doing really, really good. I do have a lot more sunflowers planted in a large row here. Uh, that's what we did in the last video. And then there's a large row right up there. Every single one of those are from my own sunflower seeds that I've saved. So they're doing really, really good. Now, what I want to talk to you about real quick right here is this row right here. Now, look, well, yeah. So this row right here is all of my Bright Lights Cosmos. This is one of the most highly recommended flowers that I always tell people to put into their garden. And what they look like, come over here real quick. I don't want to get in this mud. This is what Bright Lights Cosmos look like, the orange. They are huge pollinator attracting flowers. The three main flowers I like to plant or throw seed in terms of uh, for pollinators. Well, there's four actually. I love the Bright Lights Cosmos. Clearly, I love my sunflowers. Zinnia, which are coming up on the other side, and my Cleome. So um, just wanting to sprinkle that in here. I've done multiple videos on these items, so they're really, really important. Now, there is an important lesson here. While I mention the cosmos, there is a little bit of an evil Knievel in my garden. So about, I don't know, four to six weeks ago, I did a video showing you my garden and I told you that I had left some items and I ate some of this right in front of you. Yes, I did. You can go back. It's been well over a month. Uh, lamb's quarter. And you all talked about it and we talked about it and whatnot. Um, I got to tell you, I understand that this is something that grows natural. I understand that we can eat it. I do eat it. But let me tell you a tip right now. If you let this stuff take over your garden in large areas, it will absolutely snuff just about anything that you're growing out, okay? For example, let me tell you what happened to me last year. So for the last three years, this entire line has been a work of art in terms of volunteers. This entire row will be a huge bright lights, cosmos, orange, beautiful, row of flowers. I have multiple videos on it. Last year, this stuff started growing right within, okay? I mean, there's going to be some in some places. If you keep it at a minimum in a certain area for you to try to forage from, that's fine, okay? That's great. But let me warn you right now, if you let it grow and take over, it will kill and snuff out anything that you're growing. That is exactly what it did right here to all of my cosmos. I did not have one single, hardly, hardly, hardly one single volunteer return because this completely snuffed it out. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. If you like to have some of this grow in your garden, fantastic. Make sure it is in a very isolated corner spot and it's not competing with your corn your flowers, your beans, because this stuff right here can get ridiculous. It will take over and it will snuff anything out. If you don't believe me, watch it happen to your garden and report back because I'm telling you, I've lived it. Now, remember, so I'm gonna show you this area right here and there's a lot of space in between because 
my squash is growing and then I have cucumbers spreading. So I wanted to keep some clear path on this side. I think I could have fit a little bit more in on this side, but then again, I like to give space in my gardens. I have planted some uh, beautiful cucumbers up here and on the other side of the house, everything is coming up. Do you understand that I planted my garden probably two to three weeks later than normal? And then we got stunted a little bit by drought, in my opinion. So I've had to really, 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 on a daily basis, weed and daily basis water up until this last little, like the last couple of days where we finally started getting some rain. So we're going to uh, continue to hopefully see more growth. Now, if you're gonna, I know some of you, somebody asked me, they said, what are those pink flowers? Those are not pink flowers. Those are actually flags. They're like little construction landmark flags. So when I plant items and they haven't come up yet, I like to mark the rows with those flags so that I can see my starting points, so that I know the difference. It just helps me in terms of knowing exactly what I've got until it establishes itself. Now, you can clearly see also why we're called Rocky Top. It is no lie. Hi, Ginger. You saying hi to everybody? It is absolutely no lie, folks. Look here. Um, this is what Tennessee looks like. If we are not full of rock, we are full of a lot of red clay. So you really have to work with your soil, a lot of amendments, uh, natural fertilizers, compost, things of this nature, which is going to have to be a decision that I'm going to have to deal with after this season. So we're going to see how we uh, produce here in the next couple of weeks and months, and then we'll have to make a decision going into the fall of exactly how we're going to amend the soil again, or if we're going to give a break. Are you saying hi to everybody? You look good, girlfriend. Now the corn that I'm growing, a lot of you ask, I am growing hickory cane corn again. I only did four blocks, or well, one block, a row of four, that's my preference. Um, and it is mainly for grinding, for cornmeal, etc. So I will eat it fresh off, you know, off the cob. It is a great corn. Uh, the, the, I'm trying to remember, but the stalks get about 13 feet. Uh, we had great success last year with this. So I went for it again. I actually seed saved. So all the corn that you're seeing grow, with the exception of a few volunteers, are literally from the corn that I grew last year. So I was able to procure enough for grinding and I was able to procure enough for seed saving. I'd like to expand my cornfields over on the other side of the property, but we have a lot of deer. So we're talking about adding more fencing because the fencing really does help keep the deer out as well as the Great Pyrenees. See what I'm saying? Look, Cosmos, this stuff is everywhere. I mean, I mean, it's good for a snack, but I don't want it to kill off everything. Come on, Ginger, let's go to the other side. Come on, girlfriend. Come on, girlfriend. Okay, so right through here, let me tell you something else for you guys that are just now uh, really getting into gardening. Um, you can see these two rows right here look a little sporadic. Those are my Roma 2 beans. I do believe that after a couple, uh, within a week of planting all of my seeds, I think I had a critter get in here, not a deer, either a rabbit or a bird. And I think it took some of the seeds out. Now I am gonna be able to have enough beans for a couple of messes, probably not enough to really can with, but I'm not gonna stress about it. I just plan to um, plant them again, getting closer to the fall. Depending on where you live, the good thing about living in Southeast Tennessee is that our season is a little bit elongated. Like we can literally garden into up to November, up to frost. We typically don't see frost until around Halloween, maybe into early November. So depending upon your time frame and your fall gardening, you can actually replant tomatoes again. You can actually replant um, green beans again. So I didn't freak out too hard. I just was a little disappointed, but we're gonna do that again. The main reason I was disappointed is because you know over down on the other side, I did not plant my Missouri Wonders this year. I was giving my trellis a break and we went for this. But listen, this goes back to that whole thing. Man plans, God laughs, okay? No matter what you do, what you plant, what, whatever, 
things happen, okay? Bad weather happens, drought happens, something doesn't germinate for whatever reason. So it's that's why it's so critical for me to always tell you to have a backup pantry plan. Have things on the shelf. There is no shame in the game of you going to Aldi or wherever, I just say that as an example, of getting several cases of green beans and putting them away. There is no shame in the game if you go into the farmer's market or to the Mennonite market or wherever and buying what they have, helping them out and you canning it just the same. No apologies. This is what your grandparents went through. The difference between us and them is they actually were in a much more critical situation than we are. We're very blessed. So this is why I say, Please take advantage of all possibilities for stacking things in your pantry. Don't explain it. Don't apologize. Don't think about it. Just do it. Sister, do you have to be in the picture? Okay. Well, all right. So here's the deal. So I want to talk to you about this today. I just saw this story this morning. I don't think, I don't think it came out today. I'm not really sure. Looks like there was a situation that's sort of circulating on YouTube and uh, throughout the social media world. There's a gentleman that lives in Jones, Oklahoma. I've never been there. Don't know this gentleman. I know as much about this as you probably do. Um, it looks like this guy runs a little private farm, a CSA type thing is my guess. And the news story was that basically someone or something came in and basically sprayed ginger <laughs> sprayed all of his crops like they are decimated and he has a large plot uh, it looks like he grows tomatoes zucchini squash etc etc and he has all the landscaping material down which i absolutely despise but that's that's his business <laughs> um and he sells a lot of this produce that's his income, part of his in family income. And he woke up one day, this is like in the last week or so, I guess, and they're basically, they were dying and they are dead. Now, there's gonna be a lot of opinions here and there can also be a lot of assumptions in terms of what caused this. Is it something environmental? Is it something that maybe he did? Um, did somebody come onto the farm and sabotage? I mean, who's to say? Who's to know? Did he make somebody mad? Uh, is this an old family grudge? Is this somebody that competes with him? Like I said, we could go a hundred ways. I don't know this person. I don't know the inside and inside out. All I've seen are the same uh, the storyline and information and videos that are available to you. I do have to say that as I watched the video, I was trying to look around to see what was around the garden. What are you seeing in the garden versus around the garden? In other words, if something broadcasted from, let's say, the air, could that or would that have affected the grass and the other plants around the farm? Because they, they show you different shots. And in one shot, you see sunflowers in a big container, water trough, and the grass still looks kind of green and healthy. I don't know. What I'm saying is, is that did lead me to believe that something very specific did happen to his garden. Like somebody came through and potentially sprayed. I know they're going to send it off and find out. It'll be interesting to find out, but let's just assume that's what happened. Let me tell you right now, people want you to fail. Uh, agendas right now, right now, want you to fail. They don't want you self-sustainable. They don't want you getting ahead. So you're dealing with all kinds of different forces right now in this spiritual warfare that you're in. And it's attacking our food supply. It's attacking you as an individual homesteader. It's attacking you as an individual farmer. You need to be very well aware of that. And where I'm going with that is you need to be very self-guarded on your property. However, you need to do that in terms of fencing, guardian dogs, guardian tools, uh, cameras, lights. Is it foolproof? Probably not. But I am at this point going to encourage all of my fellow uh, viewers here, farmers, homesteaders, 
to if you haven't thought about this potential i know that i've seen a lot of you out there talk about how you're you know you've done this and you've done that and your one of your neighbors down the road just came and helped themselves this is going to continue as people continue to strive as people continue to lose jobs um, as we see the war on food and independence take place fair game for attacks this is not a new tactic this is exactly what the enemy does in a spiritual realm and they also do it in real life you can go back hundreds of years. The best way to kill off a civilization is to starve them out. Whether it's to burn their crops, kill their crops, or take their bison, whatever it takes, you make them submit to starvation. So I really want you to think about protecting your gardens, not just from the rabbits, not just from the deer, we can all, or the, you know, the beetles and whatever else. That's one thing. But there is another element of attack on your gardens, uh, on your livelihood, on your self-sustainability. So I'll put the link down below uh, in the description. There's a YouTube video on it. I hope this works out for this gentleman. I'm sure that was very devastating. Like, a, like I said, this is his income. So this isn't just taking food out of his kid's mouth, literally, or someone else's kid's mouth. This is literally taking away livelihood as well. So I hope this works out and I hope we uh, find out exactly what it is, what it could be, because we all need to know. But nonetheless, if, regardless of how it turns out, you're going to have to protect what you got, guys. Gingy. Gingy, are you the protector of the garden? Huh? Okay. All right. I'm gonna conclude this because I just saw lightning. Praying for more rain. I hope you're doing well out there. I hope all of your gardens are producing. Let me know if you have any questions. Keep at it. I do have a bunch of tomatoes growing right now. They're doing great. I'll tell you real quick. I'll do a video hopefully coming up in the next week or two on that. I'll tell you what's been my best friend this year. Shade cloth. Shade cloth. I got it off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below. You can buy it from there, you don't have to. You can buy it from anywhere, I don't care. But I'm telling you, the shade cloth situation and daily maintenance has absolutely kept them in check. And now that we've pushed past all of that drought and we're able to maintain them, they are starting to really, really thrive. I have a lot of videos on tomatoes, so be sure to check out my playlist and whatnot, but um, I'll have those coming up. But guys, it's not just about putting the seeds in the ground. It's not just about putting the labor in. It is also going to be about protecting what you have done, okay? And keep building those pantries because you never, ever know. Woo! Like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for being here. More videos on the way. We better go.